What's up guys, Twitchy here, and welcome to part 5 in the Arc Server Manager videos. Hope you guys are having a great day, but today we are going to go over a little bit of a bigger section. We're hitting up roles. Uh, if you guys have any questions on any of the previous sections, please feel free to go back into the playlist and check those uh, areas out. Um, but for now, we're going to get into this. This one might take a little while. <laughs> All right, so rules. This is a big tab. This is a big one. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here, and there's a lot of things in here that you're probably going to want to mess with um, as you kind of go about things. Um, first off here, you can see that there's hardcore mode if you want it, which I honestly don't touch myself. Um, enable PvP if you want to have a PvP server. Enable creative mode if you want to be able to do creative building. Uh, disable PvE friendly fire. We'll do that a lot on the servers, just so that uh, if you guys are in the middle of a fight and are trying to tame something, that you're not knocking each other out, <laughs> you know. So we do end up disabling that on most of my servers. Uh, I, I normally enable cave building on most of my servers as well, but if you're doing more of an official side, or if you're doing PvP, I don't even think you can turn it on in PvP. That's just a PvE setting, but, you know, some, some people don't want people to build in caves, but, uh, you know, a lot of the servers we've been on, it's been, you know, we fight through the caves once, and kind of, once we've done that, then if we want to build in bridges in the lava cave, or if we want to put a teleporter down beside it, um, so that we can get the things we need for the bosses or whatever, we'll do that. Uh, cry cryo sickness, disable PvP friendly fire. Now, see, I'm not sure about that one. I mean, of course, you do what you want to do, but PvP friendly fire almost seems like it would be a thing to have on. But again, that's up to that's up to the server manager. Uh, prevent building in resource rich areas. That you may want to have on in a PvE server because one of the things that we found that we ran into before is somebody would build and basically take some of the main resource areas and they just they wouldn't spawn anymore. So you know you may not want to have people build in the volcano area on the island because of all the metal there or some other things like that. Honestly though I found that as a community like we never really cared. We we would put like a uh, smelter set up at the volcano uh, we would all be in the same clan, um, so we could all use it. So, you know, again, that, that all comes down to your friends and you, you as managing the server. Disable non-meat fish loot. Um, <laughs> that's that's one, you know, again, I, I would, you know, I don't think you really mess with that. Use the corpse locator. That's a really nice one, so that if you die in a place and you have a hard time finding your body, you actually get the light beam in the, in the sky. I normally enable that one myself. Uh, but not everybody does, so there is that. Uh, let's see, from here, what do we got? Allow platform saddle multi-floors. Again, you know, these are these are settings that you guys just kind of have to go down and figure out if you want to allow them or not. Uh, let's see here, a, a max gateways. Does that say max gateways on saddles? I haven't really messed with that one. I do believe that just means that you can put more... Uh, parts and pieces on the saddles. I guess if you were trying to do a uh, massive base on the back of a turtle or something, you might want to might want to look at that. Let's see here. Enable difficulty overrides. That one is very important. If you want your dinos max levels to go up, then you want to be able to use this one, right? So, in this case, that one's important. The difficulty offset. If I remember correctly, the difficulty offset just means that you can have creatures sp spawning at max level. Back when I first started hosting servers, I like I didn't get any creatures over level 30, and I couldn't figure out why. Um, I do believe that is where that comes from. Enable tribute downloads. Honestly, I probably would look at that one a little bit closely because it's one of those where like, do you want people coming in with a pre-existing character into your into your arc? Do you want them to be able to get all of their elements from a different server? Like all these different things. You could actually say no item downloads, no dino downloads, so nobody can come in with like massively OP um, dinos to begin with. Allow foreign dinos? Oh no. Oh, foreign dinos. So like, like I said, those settings are, are very bad. If you don't want anyone to bring anything from any other server, 
then make sure that that's disabled. But if you want people to be able to bring in things from, you know, other servers that they're on, then that is for you. Max Tame Dinos is basically obelisk stuff with both of these things. So, like, how many dinos do you want them to be able to store in that obelisk? And how many tribute items do you want them to be able to store in that obelisk? So, it looks like what? The default looks like it's set 50-50. Cluster tribute options. Now, these, of course, are separate from outside of your cluster. Or, I mean, these are inside of your cluster. The settings before this were, were separate for outside of your cluster. Honestly, I, I don't see any reason to not allow transfers and stuff like that from within your cluster because you're setting up that cluster for people to be able to move back and forth of inside of that environment. So there is that. Um, increase the PvP respawn interval. I mean, if you're going to be a dick... <laughs> that might be one to do prevent offline pvp so that one's kind of important as a protection mechanism i mean not everybody's on all the time so of course that's one you might want to look at it just keeps people from raiding people's bases when they're offline gives them a chance you know pve schedule you can set up a schedule to basically only have your servers be pvp for a certain amount of time and in, at that point you'd probably want to use your server time Max players in a tribe, uh, I mean, none of us are really running servers that big. I guess, I guess if you really just wanted it to be like, if you had, I don't know, if you had 30 friends that were going to play on your server and you wanted to do a PvP server and you wanted to make sure that it was always teams of six, I guess you could do that to limit the tribes, but I mean, I think that they can um, get around that in other ways. Again, most of you are going to be hosting these for friends, so talk to your friends about it and just make sure they understand what's what the what the rules of the road are. Um, you can set a server to PvP and never actually have PvP if it's a good group of people, and and you're at an understanding at that point. And then you know other times you have to set it to PVE because you know the people that are around you want to mess with each other real bad. Again, that's just a, a general thing for everyone. Tribe Warfare options. Allow Tribe Warfare. Hmm? Allow Custom Recipes. Enable Diseases. This is going to be a big one for you guys. So the bats and all that stuff. If you basically want to enable diseases and you have it enabled, it's going to be permanent. Alright? So you die and you come back, you're going to get that permanent disease. If you want to at least make it a little bit easier on your people, do the non-permanent diseases. Okay? Um, if you guys don't want to deal with the disease at all, then just uncheck that and be done with it. Override NPC Network Stasis Range. So, I'm thinking they added this from S+, Plus, maybe? There, there didn't used to be really NPCs. Um, so I'm not really sure what that is. Oxygen Swim Speed Stat Multiplier. Okay, so now we're getting into the parts that are like... You just kind of have to figure out what you want. Oxygen affects your swim speed and stuff. So, like, when if you, like, bolt your oxygen way up, you could swim really fast. Um, there are certain things that ARC did along the way where they kind of nerfed back some things. I do believe this is one of them. Um, so, if you want to basically set that to where you swim faster, the higher your oxygen goes, you just boost that up a little bit. Use Corp Lifespan Multiplier. Specifies the multiplier of Corp's and dropped box lifespan. So basically how long things stay in the world before they go away. I would I would crank that one up a little bit. Uh, so the fuel consumption interval, that's another one. If you guys are running servers for a long period of time and you just don't wanna have to put gasoline in everything all the time, you can actually make it to where the fuel is not consumed as fast. Limit non-player dropped items range. Enable cryopod nerf. If enabled, will adjust the amount of damage a creature does for a period of time after it's been released from a cryopod. Why? <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing the reason for that is for PvP servers. It seems like something where, you know, if you wanted to get undetected and you just had like 100 cryopods and you just popped a whole army out right at somebody's doorstep and they're doing max damage, like, yeah, I could see where that would be a thing. Again, man, it just comes down to the people you're with. Genesis 1 and 2, you could disable the missions, you could disable the tech suit on spawn. A lot of things, I haven't played Genesis, I'm not going to lie, I haven't played Genesis all that much. So a lot of those things, I don't really, 
um, have any experience with. Same way with the Hexagon store. Ragnarok settings allow multiple tamed unicorns. Hell yeah, that's what we're talking about. I mean, why not, right? Enable the volcano. The volcano has an interval in which it, it would or would not explode, so here you can actually turn that on and off for Ragnarok. Um, so then we got, what do we have here? Item stat clamps. Warning, this will permanently change the stats of an existing items, so make sure to back up your current save before modifying and playing with the clamp values. I wouldn't mess with any of that, honestly. Um, I don't see any really reason to. If you're going to do stuff where you want to do like levels and stuff like that, just do it within the player levels and stuff. Like, you know, I don't really see any reason for that. All right, well, that, that pretty much covers the rules in a nutshell. I mean, it's a big tab. There's a lot of stuff in there. We didn't go over everything in detail. We didn't go into a whole lot of detail. If you guys have any questions about a specific part of this, please shoot me a message in the, uh, in the comments below, and I'll do my best to get back to you uh, with an answer of some sort. Again, there's a few things, new things in here since the last time I did videos and the last time I played Ark. Like, it is what it is, um, but I am going to get back into it a little bit more, so hopefully I'll have better answers for you if you have specific questions. Otherwise, I hope you guys found the information in this video at least somewhat helpful, and I will uh, talk to you guys later.